The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, High Stick NT, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Bean. Bernard Tobin here from Soybean School, uh, joined today by Dave Hooker, Dr. Dave Hooker down here at Ridgetown College, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Bernard. Hey, it's a hot one, very dry. I'm not yeah. very dry, and uh, neither one of us are. Um, you know, it's been very dry, very droughty. And I want to talk a little about soybeans. And let's talk about, you know, how does, how does drought impact soybeans? Yeah, so soybeans um, are very sensitive to drought stress, especially during the reproductive phase, the flowering phase. And you can tell that a soybean plant is stressed or a soybean crop is stressed when they start when the leaves start to flip over during the heat of the day and that's just the natural cooling mechanism that the soybean crop has to help cool themselves help to reduce that massive heat stress right. when heat stress happens the stomates begin to close and when the stomates begin to close that means the carbon dioxide is not getting in the leaf for photosynthesis right now let's talk about i guess where that yield impact takes place. I mean, um, everybody thinks about flowering and the heat of flowering, but there's, you know, there's basically four different key areas that you mentioned that, that you, know, you really have to watch for drought impact. That's right, so we really have to understand how soybeans form the yield, how the yield formation process takes place in soybeans. First, it's, it's all about the reproductive phase. And so we're talking about flower number, be number one, and the number of pods that are set from those flowers that were fertilized number of seeds per pod and the seed weight right. so the weight per seed so multiply all those factors together and then at the end of the day we have the final yield and so if that if a stress happens right during the flowering phase that means that a lot of flowers could abort but if that stress is, is alleviated due to rainfall or some non-stress if the plants are alleviated of stress, then uh, the plant the plants can uh, compensate a little bit by maintaining the number of seeds per pod and increasing the seed weight per per seed. Right. Now it all comes back to uh, I guess I, I get a question if if I'm a grower and I'm walking my fields now, you know, how can I assess I guess the remaining yield that I have in my field? Now you and I know you had a plant here. That Maybe That's right. Out. Yeah, this plant and the crop behind us here. And so the first thing I want to assess whether I have a good yield potential or not is that R1 stage, so the first flower, the canopy, the, the crop should be canopied, yeah. intercepting all the uh, sunlight at, that it can. Um, and then the second uh, phase, the critical phase, is, um, is the crop growth rate during that re reproductive phase. So the faster that plant grows, that, that means that the plant is under minimal stress. If it's growing very fast, the plants can sense that crop growth rate. And then if the plant has a very high crop growth rate, it tends to maintain or retain uh, the number of pods or the number of seeds per pod or increase the seed weight. Okay, And so those yield components um, are are pretty much formed throughout maybe a month or so between um, between the first and of August and the middle of September. Right. So the majority of the seed or the majority of the yield is around in the middle of the plant or so, and so we can look at the pods. Um, these pods are, are forming nicely. The seeds are forming within the pod. I can feel a little bit of bump of a bump within each of these pods. But you can see some of these other these other structures here. These are the pods that were aborted. So the plant um, sensed that it could not support the growth of the seeds within those pods, potential pods, and so those uh, flowers aborted or those pods aborted. So this node had six potential pods but only two formed because of the stress associated around in that corn around in the soybean plant at that particular time so as we work up the canopy we get some pods that are more and more immature and then we get to close to the top of the canopy we have still some flowers that are forming at the top of the canopy there's a chance that those flowers might abort still there's a good chance but most of the yield has been set on this on the soybean plant already but if we were let's say two weeks from now a lot of those pods will be uh, formed you can feel the seed number per pod and the, what we really want to estimate is the number of seeds on this plant so we can count the pods estimate the number of seeds in, in each pod multiply those numbers together and we get a seed number per plant 
and then multiply that number by the estimated plant population and then times the seed weight and then we can determine or estimate the yield potential that way. So soybeans are, are quite remarkable in, in, in that the yield potential, all those yield components are within uh, at least a month time frame. So even six weeks, very much different than corn. Mm -hmm. Corn, the stress period is very short, very narrow, right around pollination time. That's a critical period in corn. For soybeans, that window is much wider. Okay. And so soybeans can handle quite a bit more stress than, than corn can if that stress is uh, very focused on one, one area of that of that critical period. Awesome. Well, hey, great insights today. Hopefully there'll be lots of yields and lots of fields to share. Thanks for your sight. Yep. Thanks, Bernard.